not to um, veer too far from the topic, but I think so much of purity culture um, was a denial of the theology of suffering. Yeah. So like there was no space within purity culture to acknowledge that sometimes you go on and you don't find a spouse. And so you are struggling with unmet desires for years, Mm -hmm. years, maybe your whole life, or you go on and you have same sex attraction and you have to submit that to the Lord. And maybe, maybe you continue to struggle with that and you, you know, marrying someone is not an option. Mm-hmm. Um, or you, um, you get divorced or you get married, but you can't have children. And you thought that that was a promise. There are so many um, realities that were neglected within the purity culture rhetoric that many of us are living right now. And what I think has happened with so many of my peers who are deconstructing Mm-hmm. is that they have said in their heart, God promised me this, God told mm-hmm. me this, mm-hmm. um, and now he is lying. And so wow. one of the reasons I wanted to write this book is I wanted us to understand the difference between an actual God promise and then some of these false purity culture promises because it really has impacted the way people view their Christian faith. And, and we see people walking away from the Christian faith based on being disenchanted because mm-hmm. purity culture, I mean, it, yeah. it really is, you know, some people listening might say, well, I'm not super familiar with purity culture, but I promise you that you are seeing the results of it right now, the fallout in college students. Mm. 